So really great groundbreaking research and study. I'm gonna read it to you, and then I'm gonna share with you exactly what you may wanna do, what you could take from it, uh, and why this is so important. Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you, as always, on this Cabral Concept Show. Today's episode 2713. I'm going to link that up for you today. And the reason why this is so important is that I have many previous shows on dealing with and preventing and even reversing Alzheimer's. I have a big three-part series, and then I have a follow-up show about a year later on the specific protocol that was clinically proven to work for nine out of 10 people who already have Alzheimer's disease, uh, which is basically the furthest progression of dementia. So what I want to do today, and, and I'm also going to do a big follow-up on the APOE genotype uh, that's most susceptible. So what a lot of people should know is that there is one genotype that's much more susceptible to Alzheimer's, but as I've said it before, you don't need to be overly concerned about this. You just need to know that you're more susceptible, and then through lab testing, as well as following the right nutrition and the de-stress protocol, you're going to do yourself a world of good by looking and making sure that you're preventing that along the way. So although we're not providing medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, medical diagnosis, all of this is backed up by clinical science. And I'm going to share with you a brand new research study uh, that I think is important for you to look at. And that is because uh, this one was just done about six months ago. And it looked at the level, so the omega-3 index, I'll explain exactly what that is. Uh, they looked at the omega-3 index and those people with the APOE genotype 4, so number 4 allele, whether they had 1 or 2, so heterozygous 1 or homozygous, they had 2, uh, and how that related to the actual white matter in the brain and their susceptibility to dementia or Alzheimer's. But the truth is this. It is always about prevention is way better than having to try to cure it, right? And the other part is that there's hope. Like, you don't need to worry that just because you have an APOE genotype 4, a 3-4 or 4-4 four, four as the specific alleles, that you're destined to have Alzheimer's. There's no way you should believe that. No way that you should believe that. Because everybody with that genotype does not get Alzheimer's, right? They're just more susceptible due to levels of inflammation and, and not being able to process fats in the same way. That's why I hate, you know, greatly dislike all of this information out there, like everybody should be, you know, on a high fat diet or doing this or like LDL cholesterol doesn't matter. Well, not to everybody, but it certainly does to at least 26% of the population, right? With that uh, APOE genotype four, right? So if you look at that too, you're not alone. You have, a, you have about 26% of the population that's either uh, heterozygous or homozygous. And again, it just either means you have a 3-4 or a 4-4. Four, four. You can find out what you have on the biological age test. I can link that up today. We can actually link up labs. We just can't link up nutritional supplements uh, on podcasts where we talk about dis-ease states. So let's just confirm. Today's podcast is 2713. So that's at stephencabral.com slash 2713, uh, stop your brain from shrinking, which is exactly, believe it or not, what this study shows. I mean, pretty remarkable, right? Uh, not many of us want our brain to shrink, and this is specific as to why. All right, so what they did was they actually took this data out of uh, larger previous studies, and that enabled them to look back, well, now over 30 years. So being able to look back that long uh, gives people the ability to see if uh, any of this came true, right? Okay, so let's dive right into it. Uh, the data was collected from 2,183 participants. The mean age was 46, and it was 53% female. Uh, so again, we'll do the math on that, 47% male. Participants were without stroke or dementia, and 22% had at least one APOE4 allele. Why is that important? Well, about 26% of the population, right, has this. So in this study, 22%. That's pretty close. Like, that's a really nice cross-section of the general public, which hardly anyone ever looks at that. Red blood cell levels of the omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA, were recorded individually and combined to calculate an omega-3 index. The omega-3 index, also known as O. 
3i values were compared with various MRI measurements in cognitive function tests. Secondary assessments compared results for APOE4 carriers, one or two of the four alleles, versus non-carriers, meaning they were either a 3-3 or a 2-3 uh, but they, or a 2-2, but they had no four alleles. Okay, I'm going to actually stop after that paragraph, explain what that means. So, what they did was they looked at how much omega-3 as a percentage the individuals have in their blood, the omega-3 index. Like, what percent? What we look for uh, in our omega-3 and inflammation test is a high amount of omega-3. It's actually 9% is what we look at for that number. Not only is it amazing for dementia and Alzheimer's, which they're proving, I'll share that in a moment, but also for cardiovascular risk, right? Why? It's a powerful anti-inflammatory. Like, that's the bottom line. That It's, it's an amazing anti-inflammatory. It's also an anticoagulant, et cetera. So here's what I want to share with you. Why this is important, they actually use that compared with MRIs and cognitive function tests. So if you had higher or lower omega-3s, was that better, neutral, or worse? And did it help out people with who are more susceptible to dementia, Alzheimer's, et cetera? Okay, so higher levels of all three measures of omega-3s were associated with a larger hippocampus volume, which remained significant after adjustment for cardiovascular confounders. DHA and O3I levels above the lowest quartile were associated with larger hippocampal, cortical gray matter, and total gray matter volumes with lower white matter hyperintensities, also known as WMH, uh, which is associated with dysfunction or damage. So you do not want those lower white matter hyperintensities. Okay, so let's stop there. Let's share what that means. So essentially what they did is they wanted to look at, besides the bottom 25%, what were we looking at? Like, was it better to have the higher levels of omega-3s and O3i? Did that lead to a larger hippocampus or hippo, hippocampal volume? Why does that matter? Well, as adults get older, they often get brain shrinkage by one to 2% every single year. And the more shrinkage or volume loss there is, they have a greater risk for cognitive impairment. That means a greater risk for dementia and Alzheimer's. That's important. So the larger the hippocampal volume, the less chance and association with dementia and more. Okay, we're almost there. When correlated with cognitive measures, all three omega-3 values were significantly associated with higher performance in the similarities test, a measure of abstract reasoning. When data was grouped with APOE4 status, correlation with higher, kimple, higher hippocampal volume persisted only with DHA and O3i in non-carriers. Where the effect was doubled for the upper three quartiles, However, only APOE4 carriers with higher EPA, DHA, and O3I were associated with reduced white matter hypersensitivities and improved similarities tests. Why does this matter? Okay, here's why. You need your EPA and DHA. I've been saying this for, well, uh, on record, on record, 13 years as of today. When... I was, all, I was on the DHA camp like everybody else, right? It's more anti-inflammatory. It's more this. What I realized, once I had the ability to start lab testing, so around 2010, I, and this is meaning like for wellness clients, et cetera, I saw there was actually far greater benefit when you gave people a two-to-one or greater EPA to DHA ratio. And that is because EPA... Seem to, it seems to, not even seems to, like the clinical lab results show very easy to convert to DHA, but not as easy to convert DHA to EPA. I try to shout this from the rooftops because you can find formulas that have higher EPA to DHA and they just work better. Like that's the bottom line. They just work better. Like clinically, you can just run your own labs. You can actually see they work better. That's the bottom line. But the higher the O3i, meaning like the higher the index, the more improvement there was in the hippo, hippocampal brain shrinking, so less of that, and reduced white matter hyper 
intensities. So it helped all around. Now, the good news is this. You don't need to supplement with mega doses of omega-3s. We're talking two to three grams maximum per day, right? That's it. We use two grams in my practice because we always err on the side of caution. Two grams of fat, like lids, people get all wild about omega-3s. It's two grams. You're probably eating 100 grams of fat per day. Like, I mean, when you look at the total. So the two grams goes a long way to help balance all of those higher inflammatory omega-6s. So again, even the best grass-fed meat is still usually a three to one. I've never seen lab-tested grass-fed beef lower than a three to one. I've just never seen it. In pastured chicken, pastured eggs, never seen it. It doesn't seem to exist. I don't know that it can. Like, I just don't know that that's, and that's okay. Three to one is an amazing ratio. But there's other food in your diet besides that, right? And so we have to look, we have to be careful of all these omega-3s. Anyway, uh, tremendous benefit. I'm very happy to see that the ApoE4, which is the most susceptible to, de to dementia and Alzheimer's, got great benefit from this for a very small amount of omega-3s. So now let me share with you how much omega-3s you need to get about this result. So it's about four to six ounces, about four times per week, three to four times per week of wild-caught salmon, wild trout, sardines, mackerel, anchovies. Those are typically the highest omega-3 fish without the higher levels of mercury. Yeah, because you can definitely get high omega-3s in tuna, but then you're dealing with mercury. Even some of the, again, even the, you know, line caught and et cetera. Keep in mind, tuna is a large fish. It's a very large fish. It builds up mercury over time, whether it's from healthy waters or not. So I'd say go easy on the tuna. Maybe once a month, I would go easy on that. But the others, like salmon, vegetarian-based fish, right? It's not gonna accumulate all that mercury, even though it's a larger fish uh, over its life. Not as big as tuna, but you know what I'm saying. So uh, that's a huge benefit. Now, you do have to eat with the skin. A lot of people overlook that part. The Largest amount of omega-3s is typically in the skin for most of these things. So uh, just, just kind of keeping that in mind. The, the way that most people do in our practice is they eat fish, just like I do, a few times a week. But you take two grams of omega-3s on a daily basis, two soft gels or one teaspoon of omega-3 liquid. It's really simple. It's called daily omega-3 support. Uh, we use Equalife. That's who we use in our, in our practice. That's who I formulate for. But if you're working with a naturopathic doctor, an integrative health practitioner, you can use whatever brands they recommend that do lab testing to make sure that it's cold processed, to make sure that it's um, triglyceride bound so that your body can absorb it the same way so it's not filled with oxidized polyunsaturated fats, it's non-oxidized, uh, and that it's been tested for omega-3s like, uh, such as mercury. I mean, sorry, tested for heavy metals such as mercury. And that's what you're looking for. So again, there's a lot of great brands out there. I'll just let you know what we do in our practice. But the, the research is irrefutable. For cardiovascular, for all of the top causes of mortality, right? Let's go through them. Cardiovascular, stroke, type 2 diabetes, cancer, dementia, Alzheimer's. Those are all top five, right? And omega-3s help with every single one of those. You're welcome to research it yourself. I just like to get the information out there. So if you don't want your brain to shrink as you get older, just keep trying to balance those omega-3s to omega-6s. Really great, great clinical research here. I will link it up today, again, along with the three big takeaways and previous shows on Alzheimer's, dementia, lab tests to run, protocols, and much more at stephencabral.com slash 2713 for all of today's show notes. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your support, your reviews, your downloads, your subscribes. Always do feel free to share the show as well with anyone you think it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.